Hello and welcome to another stream. All right, another Monday. We're going to try and get this guy finished up today. Let's do my bit of housekeeping. Get this going here. <clears throat> Sharing the page. Sometimes it goes right away and sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. Hey guys. Awesome, awesome. All right. So, well, I found the found the post. See if I can share it. Uh Hold on. I did it wrong. <laughs> Hello from Belgium. There we go. This is better. Share now public and share to a not to my story. A page. There we go. Boom. And share. There we go. Awesome. All done. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So how is everybody doing? We left our hero in this state last week, and I just wanted to continue adding the hair, adding the clothes, and uh, essentially finishing him up. I'm, I'm really liking what he's looking like so far, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to finish him up. Hey, what's up, Neil? What's up, Matt? How you guys doing? Hey, Aika. All right. So... <clears throat> Let's get this going. I have a feeling his forehead's gonna be a little too short, but we'll see. Oh, in New Zealand, hello. Welcome, welcome, okay. Um, I want to do his little his little chin beard thing, and I had an idea for it that I wanna um, kinda want to experiment with. <clears throat> and hello from Brazil. Hey, Angry, how are you? And your name is always so dark on my I don't know why it's like here I'll show you what it looks like on my on my re restream chat this is what I'm looking at right here angry this is your name right here it's like dark I have to like highlight it to see who it is <laughs> too funny <laughs> all right from Denmark and from India all over the world awesome I love it when you guys just stop by and hang out with me no matter what time of day it is, crazy. Okay, actually, before I do that, let me grab a color off of here. Let's see how red. Maybe that color. Let's go with that color. Okay. From Thailand. Hey, what's up, David? Okay. Chinny, chin, chin. And we're going to split it to unmask points. Yes, thank you, David. That's awesome. Okay. Let's get it buried. So what I want to do is kind of bury this sphere in his chin. And then I'm just going to like subdivide it, delete the subdivision level, and then do Sculptor's Pro on it. So now it's about that dense. Let's turn on Sculptor's Pro. And we'll change it to, I need to really save this as my default. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. Um, turn off adaptive size and crank this down a bit. And turn off spotlight projection. <laughs> nice. Okay, that's about that's about right. Maybe a little smaller. There we go. That's better. Okay. So now what we can do is um you know sometimes uh clay buildup I really like it for some for certain style of hair. And uh 
you can kind of see this right here. But we're still maybe a little too heavy. Something like this. And you can cut into it too by holding Alt and build it up. So you can kind of make it look like hair. Um, just by the nature of the strokes, you know. Kind of fun. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, I'll answer my, so my weight question, I've just gone to, um, I've been trying out whole food plant-based, which is essentially, it's kind of like vegan, I guess, but, um, not so, not so, uh, strict that way. So, um, why, why Sculptress Pro and not Dynamesh? Um, the reason why, in my opinion, I like it better because, uh, Dynamesh will rebuild your entire mesh where Sculptress Pro will just focus the detail wherever you put it. Um, and I, I don't want to rebuild my entire mesh because it will destroy some of my detail whenever I do that. So I, I want to kind of stay away from that a little bit. From what the health? Um, kind of. Uh, and the whole, um, what's the other one? Oh man, there was an yeah, there was another documentary on Netflix called Game Changers. Watch Game Changers. That changed my yeah, changed my outlook pretty much on everything and it's true. I have I mean, I'm I don't want to get into it too much, but I have more energy now than I've ever had, honestly. And it's crazy. So <laughs> Hey, what's up comics? I've been riding my mountain bike a ton. I bought a mountain bike. I was talking about it last week. And I uh, love it. Okay, I'm going to turn off symmetry. So I can get some asymmetry happening on this, on this edge right here. I kind of want this hair to crawl up the side a little bit. When I Z remesh high poly sculpt for poly group UV map reason, both scale and location is different. Why is that? I can't bake in Substance Painter because of this reason. When I Z remesh high poly sculpt, um, I usually don't use my high poly Z remeshed mesh as my low. I will retopologize it. Um, that's but if you are going to use your Z remesh, um, make sure you're exporting it out at the same scale. Um, that could be a reason. I don't know what happened there, but I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure because I can't see it. But any, any time I've had a scale issue, um, it's been because this export right here. See how it says export scale one. Um, you might want to experiment with different scales there. So I'm not sure. I think um substance is in meters so scale one should work i'm not i'm not sure hey from columbia hello i could yeah yeah for sure there's there's some there's some of that going on for sure and i'm also doing it for personal reasons you know so it's working for me you know i there's no complaints coming from me so <laughs> whether, whether there's propaganda in it or not, it's working. So I'm enjoying, it's difficult for sure. Especially when you want to go eat out, you know, it's like, there's no place. There's not really many places that will fit that type of eat, way of eating. Okay. I'm liking that little beardy, beardy beard. Pretty fun. All right, hold on a second. Okay, let's do his 
his hair. Now I want to do the sides and the back of his hair exactly like I did his beard. Is that a new haircut? No, I usually have my headphones on. That's why, yeah, I'm usually like this. So, um, but I have, I really have no hair. <laughs> Just from the, on the sides, really. <laughs> okay. So let's do the same thing with his, his hair in the back. Make a spear and then split it off. Oops. Need to arrow down first to select the hair. There you go. That's about my haircut right there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh yeah, they are. Uh, they are separate pieces right now, comic. It depends. Um, I may or may not merge them in. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? How's it going, man? It's always wonderful to have you hanging out with us. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Working on me. That's why I was saying this. Like it looks like my haircut. I have. I pretty much have the same, same haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! There you go. There's an even better one. Let's kind of pull this down into place. Is it? Oh, I forgot to turn symmetry on. Come on. Do it. <laughs> Everybody's noticing since I don't have my uh, my headphones on. <laughs> or so. Yeah, I've, I've lost about like 40 pounds or something like that since I started. Pretty crazy. I had no idea. I would. I wasn't really um, doing it to lose weight necessarily. But that was the kind of the side benefit of it. All right, warbles. <laughs> Every other comment, you look like you've lost weight. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> Three yard. Thanks. <laughs> I should put my headphones back on so it's not so distracting, huh? <laughs> you know, comic, I actually thought about it. <laughs> Except for I didn't take very many before pictures. I guess I have a lot. Oh, Jim, is that tomorrow? I've been hearing about it. Like the, what is it called? The million mile battery announcement or something? Sorry, Warren, I'm, uh, Warren Butcher's messaging me. I, I see it on my watch. I get my notifications on my watch. It's like, oh, Warren's messaging me. I'll, I'll message you after. <laughs> Okay, and yes, uh, Sculptus Pro is still on, so I'm kind of um, editing that as I go. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, who knows what they're going to announce, right? Just big announcement. It could be anything, really. But we'll see. All right. Yay, yes, Jimmy's work does need sharing. You guys, if you don't know who Jimmy is, uh, he's another fantastic modeler um, that uh, just outstanding work. If you want somebody to study, study Jimmy's work. Awesome. 
and Neil just posted his uh, link to his art station or his uh, Instagram. Thanks, Neil. Right, I kind of want to make this hair a little lower. Let's square it off. And I'm going to bring it out this way too. Yeah, anytime, Jimmy. I, I mean it. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, your work is fantastic. And you, you know, I know, you know that I'm a huge fan. I was trying to get this, uh, this crown, see how it's kind of pinching like this? I really want to get that shape going on here, so I'm going to focus on that a lot. <laughs> Thanks, man. have to edit his head so sometimes when you get the hair in there you realize the head is the head is misshapen for lack of a better term all right hey what's up creative did i miss any questions if i've missed your question um please feel free to ask it again I was just saying, Neil, that's, yeah, it's already my hair haircut. When I start getting these little flippies out front, it'll change a lot. But right now, I just kind of want to focus on this cranium shape. And it might help. I'm, it might help when I get, when I remesh this, because sometimes uh, that's the, that's one downfall of Sculptress Pro is it's very lumpy, or it can be. It's easy to be lumpy. You don't want to be lumpy. Okay. Do I have something in mind for Black Friday? Any promotion? I I'm. I'm working on something else right now that I think everybody will be excited about. I'm hoping, my fingers are crossed, but uh, I can't say too much right now. Um, but it's it will be way more affordable, just overall, in general. So be looking for that. Okay, let's do some polish. A little BHP going on. That's the that's the hot key for uh, H polish, by the way. BHP. Hey Quint Quintonius, how's it going? Hey Vicky. Welcome to the stream. We're having fun today. This guy's a lot of fun anyway. <laughs> Trying to uh, clean up the peak. The, the, so it had kind of a, a little peak rolling into this edge here that I wanted to get rid of. Keep stretching my clay and it gets pixelized. Is there any way? Okay, uh, what, what mode are you in? Are you doing, are, are you trying to, uh, well, let's just take a look. There's a couple things you can do. Um, if you are running, if you're doing a, a dynameshed mesh, you just have to re it after you stretch it. That's one way or one reason that I like to use Sculptress Pro is because you won't run out of geometry. Um, so I have Sculptress Pro turned on right here. You can see that. And if I grab the snake hook brush, 
Not the move brush. The move brush doesn't work with it. So the snake hook brush, as I pull, it's going to generate geometry, right? Now all of a sudden he's a happy guy. I love it. <laughs> so th that way you won't run out of geometry when you when you stretch it. Okay, that's that's really good for Sculptures Pro. Um, and if you have that turned off and you try to do the same thing, you'll see it just stretches the polys like this, right? So um, the um, how to how to get away from that is you want a dynamesh. So if you're after you're pulling it out, you can just run dynamesh, which is over here. See probably higher here, dynamesh it, and then it'll rebuild the surface and uh, fix those stretch polys. But I kind of uh, I haven't been using dynamesh too much recently. And again, just because I don't have anything against it, it's perfectly perfectly fine. It's just uh, it rebuilds your entire mesh and it will get rid of some of your details that you have going on, like these edges. And I don't want that. So how do I use that? How do I activate that mode in the... Okay, so it's right here. Sculptress Pro. You have to be on a brush that will support Sculptress Pro, um, like Snake Hook or something like that. If you're on the move brush, like this move brush right here, it's going to be grayed out because uh, move does not work with Sculptress Pro. So you'll e either have to push shift which will turn on smoothing, which does work with Sculptress Pro, and then just activate it right there. Now, if you want this user interface, this, this is not the default user interface. If you want this interface, you can go to my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, and uh, grab it for free. And I also hand out these brushes for free. If you want to go grab those as well. So. Okay. Let's get, um, get a little hair happening here. I'm gonna use Dylan's brush on this one. Good old Dylan Ekron's hairbrush, love it. Yeah, no worries. Um, if I want a job in a on game company, I'm saying I, I assume you're saying in a game company. Should I know ZBrush, Maya, Substance Painter at the same time at high level? I mean, do the modeling from zero to a hundred on my own. Um, that is a difficult question to answer. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on what company you want to work at. It depends on if you want to do, uh, what that, what software the game company you want to work at uses in their pipeline. Because there's Maya, there's 3D Studio Max, there's, there's a, a ton of them. But to get the high resolution version, it's, people usually use ZBrush. So it's, it's really good to learn ZBrush first. If the companies that you're trying to get into use high res characters, there's some like mobile game studios that still uh, just do low polygon modeling and they don't use ZBrush, but uh, most companies nowadays use, use ZBrush. I'm gonna turn off symmetry and let's just try this. Um, you can see how, now this is Dylan Ekron's hairbrush. You can find it over on Gumroad. Um, and it's just a collection of, of uh, strands, like hair strands that you can pick from. And I wanted to just use this simple A one. But by default, the fall off uh, goes from skinny to thick. See that? And that is not so good. So what you'll want to do is go to stroke and go to curve functions no curve modifiers and click on this curve fall off and see it goes from skinny to fat right there and we kind of want it to go the opposite direction i don't want it to go super skinny i'll just kind of adjust it like this and let's see what that looks like okay that's a little bit better um so i'm going to come come at it from the side it, it draws it based off of either either it'll stick to the surface of your character or it will stick to the, um, the, the camera plane in the direction you draw it. So I kind of want it to go up and down like this. And I don't know how well that's going to work. I might just draw it straight out and then curve it after the fact. Oh, goodness. 
Okay, this isn't working too well. Maybe I'll just stick it to the head like this and then adjust it after. <laughs> uh, do you think it's more difficult to sculpt human or animals? Um, it depends on what, what it is, Marcelo, and it depends on... Um, I don't think about... I don't necessarily think about what it is I'm sculpting all the I it's it's just as easy or difficult to sculpt something versus another thing if you have the proper reference and the proper like um uh well reference yeah that's it, it really boils down to reference so if I'm modeling an animal um I'll get the concept you know that I have and then if there's parts that I don't I don't have memorized in my head I'll go get anatomy reference and I'll have it a whole board of anatomy reference on my other monitor that I'm looking at while I'm sculpting off of the concept and I kind of put them together and uh, yeah and it kind of just becomes you're just sculpting a thing so don't get hung up on whether it's a human or an animal or something else it's like um, well yeah it's kind of hard to get into but <laughs> okay I just extended that curve you can extend a curve on something by hovering near the end and it's hard to see but there's this little tail this little red tail right there and if you click on during that red tail you can extend the the hair out that way okay so now I have this hair and it's kind of where I want it um, and now I can get, grab this move elastic brush actually I'm gonna split it off first Split to unmask points. Um, I I could use blend bend curve, but I'd have to draw that hair just straight out, and it was sticking to the head, so I'd have to turn off snapping, and I'll just do it this way. It's all good. Whoops. I keep uh, forgetting to go down in my levels. Okay. How you remove remove a curve? You just uh, tap on the surface of the of the sub tool that you drew the hair on you just tap on the surface and it'll go away you can also remove it from the stroke curve menu um, I can't remember where it is but you can turn it off up here can't remember where it is Cosman I'm good thanks okay You do the same, Jimmy. So, is is am I am I lying when I say, do you get do you get hung up on what you're sculpting? Like, is it is it a bear? Is it a cat? Is it whatever? I what I was gonna say is um, sometimes you have to get out of your own way when it comes to being anxious about what you're trying to draw. Like, oh, I'm gonna draw a cat. I've never drawn a cat before. You know it's but in reality it's just like drawing anything else you you look at the thing and what you see is what you draw there there is some extra things yes that go into the bucket or the the knowledge bucket right as far as um you know your anatomy and stuff like that your knowledge that always helps but but uh as far as seeing goes you're trying to interpret what you see and um uh, so anatomy knowledge helps you interpret and design knowledge helps you interpret, but um, it's, it doesn't come down to, you know, I, I can't, I can't model a lion because I've never done it before or whatever. It's just, you know, block it, block out what you see. You see, bl break it down into very simple shapes um, before you start really digging in and it will help you a lot. What I was going to say is, um, it's the same as as figure drawing as well right figure drawing if you ever go to figure drawing or if you ever sit out in a field and draw a shed to me it's not not what you're drawing but the the actual uh practice of it is kind of the same thing it doesn't matter what you're drawing you, you're just looking at what's in front of you and you're taking into uh account like perspective and all that kind of stuff and lighting and shadow and da -da 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 -da, all the stuff and you're trying to interpret that and, and put it down on paper or in your sculpt it's the same thing um, so whether I'm sitting out in a field drawing a barn or inside of a classroom drawing a figure to me you get in this Zen state and you're you're not really paying attention to what 
specifically it is you're drawing or sculpting, it's all about, you know, getting in that state. You're looking at the shadows, you're looking at the forms, you're looking at all that stuff and all the rest goes away. Does that make sense? <laughs> there you go, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, do a centaur. It's both. How in the heck do you do that? So I just embraced the grind toes kind of there. Looks like crap until it doesn't. <laughs> you need, you know, honestly, I need a shirt that says that. Looks like crap until it doesn't. Let's turn on dynamic. And the reason I have the uh, wireframes turned on right now is because I want to see how close these loops are together. <clears throat> yeah, man, do it. I want to see it. I love the meme that's going around about the centaur, like how would a centaur wear pants? <laughs> like this, like this. Pretty funny. Okay, I need to I need to focus on what I'm doing here for a minute. Sorry, I've thought uh yeah, I, I hope that helps. Um Marcelo. I, I've thought a lot about that recently. So that's why I kind of had to do my little soapbox spiel. <laughs> oh, you've seen, the, are, are you talking about the meme? You've seen the meme, the, the centaur meme with the pants? <laughs> Pretty funny. Okay, make sure uh, Sculptress Pro is not on. Oh, you haven't. Okay. Hey, thanks, Warren. <laughs> no worries. I got your message. I'll reply later on. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Thanks, Louise. Louis or Louise? I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> it's 10 years old. Nobody can fault you for that. Oh man. I have some old videos up on Vimeo from some of my my first character sculpts when I was trying to figure ZBrush out. And I was using the the mask pull method. So if I wanted to make some arms, I would mask out where I would pull the arms out of and then invert that mask and then just grab the geometry and pull it out and then dynamesh that. And it would just make the streaky, nasty geometry. And then I'd have to smooth it out. It was just not, not the best way to go. It still worked. Um, I was still happy with it, but man, what a pain in the butt. Okay, try and turn this so it starts to go down his, I'm gonna make a part line, I'm trying to visualize his part line. So Kev, I talk to Mitch all the time. Like uh, we've, we've become pretty good friends. And uh, the way Mitch draws is very, very similar to the way I sculpt. In fact, you may have seen some of my influences on him and you've definitely seen some of his influences on me. So uh, like I said, we, we talk all the time and we have very, very similar ideas when it comes to stylized characters and uh, you know, whether it's drawing or sculpting or what have you. So yeah, Mitch is fantastic. And Mitch has a really awesome uh, Patreon going on. Uh, you should follow Mitch. And I've done a whole bunch of his uh, sculpts on here. If you've watched, if you can watch some of my back, my back series. If you want to watch some of my older videos, you can always go to, let's find it here. Um, Z, just uh, do a search for ZBrush Live, and it's the first one that comes up right here. Okay, and you can actually watch the live streams here, and you can see all of the other live streamers. There are a lot of live streamers that stream here on on Pixelogic's channel, and uh, you can see we're streaming right now. 
Um, and if you want to see who's streaming, you can click on calendar up here and it will show you all of, so Pablo's going later tonight, so is Thomas, and you can uh, continue. Um, Maria is fantastic. She's a new one. Uh, met her at the ZBrush Summit last year. Phenomenal sculptor. And uh, of course, we got our, our, our good friend, Paul DC. Um, so you can go scroll down here and see uh, everybody. There's me right there next Monday. So, um, and if you want to see their past stuff, you can click on presenters and you can see all of our pictures. This is a, an ad for all the streamers. We become good friends with the, most of these people. It's pretty crazy. Um, and uh, you can see me here. I'm, I'm only here because I've streamed so dang much. That's, that's the way, the order that they put them in is how mu much you've streamed. But you can click on like Ashley's or my, my past broadcast and schedule. And you can see um, some of my old work and you can see like this is last week's and you can keep going and see some of these um i was i was going to look to see if i could see a mitch leeway's uh stuff here uh for sandro there's josh black i do i sculpt a lot of the same same character designers sculpts um anyway this is luigi i can't i'm not seeing any anyway I'm not going to scroll through this whole thing, but um, anyway, that's where you can go and see past broadcasts if you want to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Mitch. Yeah, he he's on. Uh, yeah, he shares all the time on all sorts of platforms. Super, super active. That Mitch guy. Sometimes brushes or tools appear inside the model and not outside it. I don't understand what that do you have a screenshot what's the difference between game character design and movie character design I want to work as a character artist I'm struggling deciding which one will be the best um, I've talked about this in the past the the biggest there there are a few things that are different um, and they're getting closer and closer all the time in fact they're the closest they've ever been to each other but the biggest thing with, uh, because this could turn into a film character or a game character at this point. So from the high resolution, it doesn't matter which way it goes. You can take this to a toy or film or television or, you know, anything. So if you're, if you're not uh, decided, just work on your high resolution sculpts. Okay, that's, that's the best thing you can do because that will just make you a better character sculptor in general whether you want to go into movies or film, there's a lot of crossover too. A lot of my friends have crossed from games into film, like my good friend, Christopher Wright. He used to work with me at Disney Interactive and he's worked at Sony and other places like that. And uh, he's, yeah, he's totally in the film industry now. And um, so I was actually asking him like what he has seen that's the kind of the biggest differences. And one of the biggest differences is kind of the thickness in clothing and how that works because it's usually a cloth simulator versus a modeled out cloth. So you handle the clothing differently. You handle the hair differently. It's usually a hair simulation. There's actually people like my friend Tyler Bolliard um, that the, their job is to do a look development. It's called look dev. And what that means is they're, they're the ones responsible for making the cloth look like cloth, like all the little textures and things like that or the hair look like hair and be simulated and that kind of thing. And, and all the textures look like skin. And, um, there's actually people's, you know, that's a, that's a job. That's a thing. Um, and then, um, another, a lot of the biggest differences are, uh, in, in film, you can use a subdivided model in the film, in the render and in game, you can't, you have to have a low resolution poly model that you then bake your textures to. Okay, so usually film characters uh, use displacement maps, which will use the subdivision surfaces, which will offset the actual physical geometry, whereas uh, games will use normal maps, which will fake that. And uh, that's and there's uh, films use these things called UDIMs, which are essentially packs of UVs. Like you can spread your UVs out a lot larger uh, because your textures are more high definition. Um, anyway, I can go on and on, but that's kind of the big, biggest differences. So in my opinion, I would just focus on your high resolution characters. 
and then uh, divide out and, and conquer wherever you want to go from there. Okay. Let me, let me focus on this a little bit more. Your questions are great. Let me uh, get, get focused here for a minute. Let's go throw another, another hair over here. That'll work. Sounds like my fam's home. So let's see, I do not get the same details as in ZBrush when I bake high poly on low poly in substance or I use displacement on normals in Maya, what should I do? And Kit, that is a huge, huge question that I wish I could answer right now, but it's it's like way beyond the scope of what I'm doing here. Um, I would check out, what would I check out? I would check out, I think Flip Normals has some videos on that. Um, Let's see, I, I, I go over it in my course. I teach a course online, it's called the 3D Character Workshop, and I actually teach you how to take a character from zero to final game character, including baking maps and everything. So if you're interested in that, you can go over to 3D Character Workshop and uh, and, and find out more about that there. Um, but if you're just wanting to you know learn more about baking and things like that, um, I would suggest uh, checking out the um, Marmoset tools videos they talk about baking a lot and uh and the substance baking tools you can bake it in substance as well so <laughs> thanks angry yep pablo does some great stuff on that too uh let's see tv shows are a fusion of both games and movies yeah that's that's true comics that's a good point Okay. I'm gonna shorten this guy up a little bit. Oops. Also, if you guys didn't know, I gotta throw this out there. Pixelogic just barely added Z Remesher, albeit kind of a, a, a lesser version of it, but it, they still added it to ZBrush Core. Um, so if you're interested in that, it makes, um, it makes ZBrush Core all that more useful. So if you want to get into sculpting and just try it out and see if it's for you, ZBrush Core is a great option uh, without you know getting the full version of ZBrush. You can get in there and you can mess around and it's, it's, uh, it's a good place to start. So I just barely downloaded that the other day and I was messing around with it. I'm not quite uh, comfortable to use it during my stream yet and plus I had already started this guy in the regular ZBrush so at one point in the future I may do a a stream where I use Sculptress or a uh, ZBrush Core I keep wanting to say Sculptress Pro thank you Neil yeah I do have a lot of my uh, a lot of my students here watching now from the 3D Character Workshop hey guys thank you for joining me you always have such nice things to say. Oh, you just joined us, no name? Awesome. Congrats, welcome. And please email me if you have any questions about the course. Let's bring this down over his forehead a lot more. Go, this is way to the side. I'm gonna see what I can do to scoot this whole thing over on this side a bit. A Rob R style character? I don't know if I... I'm sure I, I've seen it, but right off the top of my head I'd have to... Can't recall what his stuff looks like. <laughs> You're a 2D artist and recently found interest in 3D. Awesome. So the good news is the skills will transfer. So um, you just have to get past the tech. And as soon as you get past the tech, your skills should transfer. If 
you are to animate this character eyelid, would you paint the pupils in the center of the eye or would it be just not painted in ZBrush? It just depends, Mohammed. It depends completely on the game engine or the, the movie, whatever you're trying to do. There are like about 10 different ways you can do eyeballs. You can actually, usually what I'll do is I'll build them. I'll build the iris, I'll build the pupil so it, it, it functions like a realistic eye. Something like this guy where it's just a dot that represents his pupil and his iris together. I will typically just use just a piece of geometry like this that's floating on the surface and, and animate that. So, because all you have to do is just kind of get that thing to move around and be convincing um, because the, the reflection and the highlight are not going to follow that, right? So it just depends on the style that you want your eye to have. Okay. And I really want to, okay. Just something I'm looking at that I want to fix is, let me see if I can draw it on here. Okay, so see how the shape coming up from his ear is kind of going upward and outward, like in this direction. And on my guy, I mean, no, it's not from the three quarter angle like this. I mean, it's looking okay from the three quarter angle, but I wanna mimic that uh, shape language from the front. So I want to bring this out like this and back um, to, to give it in more of an interesting shape in his hair. I shine, I, I think that's the first time I've been shine. <laughs> that's a, must be autocorrect or something uh the blocking process apply for likeness characters too or just for stylized characters oh yeah for real realistic characters it works well for two um i have several students that do realistic characters and they still use the primitive blockout method and it works well because that is what you're that's what you're you're doing right you're just you just have to get the shapes in there whether they're going to be realistic or stylized you have to get this it's like if you're going to do a realistic sculpt out of real clay, you have to get the clay there first. And it's easier if the shapes are simplified and then you make it realistic from there versus just kind of clawing at it and going, you know, going to town that way. And there are sculptors that will do that as well. But in, in my opinion, I much prefer the block out with primitive shapes method. Hey, what's up, Hopper? Uh, hold on a second. I'm just going to try and mask this off. Oh, I guess I get, it would help if I actually have the hair selected, huh? Okay. Oops, I need the, I need the mask. All right. Okay. Now that will give me my starts and I want to mask this off just so I can pull it out and I'll, I'm, I know I'm going to break it, but I'll fix it after I'm done. Maybe like that. And then you can blend the mask or blur it. And then a trick is you can use this gizmo and put it where you want to um, arc something, like the pivot point of where you want to arc something. So I want to make this hair wider from the front. So I'm putting the gizmo down to the pivot where I want it, and then I can rotate it out like this. Okay, now while I, while I still have it masked, then I can, yes, I just broke the heck out of it, but I want to start. Fixing it from here. Okay, now you can see how it created all these stretched out polys. Right, so then all, all you have to do is turn on Sculptors Pro and go clean that up. Um, somebody asked, what's the difference between Sculptors Pro and regular sculpting? 
Um, essentially, Sculptress Pro is uh, dynamically generating topology as you go, and regular top regular sculpting is not. So you'll get stretched polygons. No name, I agree. I'll just say that right now. I'll, I agree. Okay. Don't want dynamic on. You don't want to have dynamic turned on if you're using Sculptress Pro, that's for sure. Those two are like oil and water. They don't work well together. Okay, you can see how I messed up the back of this head now. I'm just going to kind of work my way around and fix this. And then um, it's much easier if this is low resolution rather than Sculptress Pro. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this and um, Z remesh it. And I pulled this out way too far, but we'll, we'll try. We'll try and fix it here. Let's see. Um, Z remesher, where are you? Let's go one and see what that gives us. How is your Sculptress Pro settings? Um, so basically, uh, all I do is I turn off adaptive size right here i'll turn that off because i don't like by default your brush size determines your uh triangle density and that drives me crazy i don't want that so i just turn that off and that's that's how you turn it off is adaptive size and now the subdivide size becomes your triangle size and that's here in my interface up here you can adjust it up and down and that will change your triangle size Okay, um, now I have this low resolution mesh. You can see, much easier to work with. Let's turn off Sculptress Pro. Now I can smooth it way easier and polish it way easier and edit it a lot easier. It will be smooth and clean and not lumpy. So the Sculptress Pro will essentially help you get your, your shapes into place. And then you can Z remesh it after that to clean it up kind of a thing. Did you print all the toys behind you? Um, one single mesh or multiple? So they're multiple meshes, all of them. In, in the end, they're, uh, they're, they're still separate, but I have to merge pieces together and key them, and uh, it's quite the process. But, um, so they do end up being multiple meshes, uh, but not how you think, probably. They're not, they're different multiple meshes than what you use when you're creating your character. Complete beginner wanted to know at what stage should I pose my character? Um, when your A pose, your base pose, is as far as you can possibly get it. Um, so it's, it's pretty much a finished character, and then you can pose it. And what's interesting with that is usually I will uh, pose my character and I will I will find a lot of things wrong with my character as I'm posing it. And then I will have to, uh, I'll have to kind of put those things back into the, the A posed character as I discover them, if that makes sense. Okay, we got a warble like crazy. Now you can see how Instead of going straight up and down, now it's kind of flaring out, and it's much more interesting to me, I think. Okay, let's. I need to fix this hair. I like it starting from a side part, but now that it's over here, I need it to be much bigger. Come across the front. I have a story about Big Trouble in Little China. So, I and I'm 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 not going to remember his name. Um, <laughs> oh, that's too funny, man. Thanks, thanks for that laugh. Uh, so the 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 guy, 
who played um the, oh gosh the the evil emperor guy like the, the king that was after the girl with green eyes what is his name help me out you guys please so he was at a local comic-con And, um, yeah, what's his name? I can't even remember. He was, he was at a local comic con here in Salt Lake city and he was signing autographs and stuff. And, uh, and he went to the bathroom at the same time that I did. And, and, and so it's just funny because I, I can say I, I took a leak next to that guy. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I, I was expecting him to like vanish into the wall when he was finished. Oh, I love Big Trouble in Little China so much. Low pan. Thank you. There it is. Low pan. Thank you. I peed next to Low pan. <laughs> funny. Funny, funny. Okay. Now the next step is see this slope going up in a peak. And see how this is not doing that james hong okay that's his real name there you go sorry james so let's pull that up let's see we're into this an hour just to do all this hair that's okay we're, we're doing good let's turn off symmetry build this up Is the free version of Sculptress good enough to just practice sculpting? Absolutely. You know, as a matter of fact, I have a YouTube video that I did ages, ages, ages ago that uh, I walk you through making a head with just Sculptress Pro or just Sculptress, not Sculptress Pro, Sculptress, the standalone package. And you can go check that out. It's still relevant today, even though I made it like ten, more than 10 years ago, I think. Yes, I'm old. Holy cow. Okay, there's this part. Hey, what's up, Chris? I have old videos too, Jimmy. saw it when you were eight I think that's about I I was a little older than that I think I was like 10 or 12 when I saw that for the first time if I use Z remesher on an already UV unwrapped model does that mean I have to unwrap the UVs again yes it will rebuild your mesh and it will kill the UVs so you'll have to unfortunately you'll have to redo the UVs again yeah big trouble in little China it's fantastic So I'm just thinking about some of the one-liners in that. Oh my gosh. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I don't know about you guys. That's from the movie. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Another one, another uh, movie like a horror movie like that is uh, the, the Frighteners. I love with Michael J. Fox. So good. One of my favorite movies. Frighteners. There we go. Okay, let's fill this. this <laughs> it totally did the the electric guy right the storm he's like I think he's called storm <laughs> is 
is uh is it Raiden? He's like Raiden. He was essentially a copy of Raiden, right? Oh man, I don't know about that, Jimmy. That'll that'll destroy <laughs> that'll destroy their feeble little minds. Okay, let's let's start working on this the clothes here. We'll be good. Let's uh that reminds me to save this thing. Should probably save it. Oh, let's see. Pre Lord of the Rings. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's true, huh? I forgot that was that was Jackson. That's awesome. Um Is it better to pinch the edges with Sculptress Pro or not? No. No. So turn pinching off. If you grab my brushes off of my website, sorry, another pitch for my brushes. If you go get my free brushes and you want to use my pinch brush, this print pinch brush has Sculptress Pro turned off by default, just like the move brush, because if you have Sculptress Pro turned on of, on your pinch brush, it's going to uh, fight with it. So you're generating topology as you're trying to pinch and it's just not going to work. It's going to make a mess. Oh, the scene with the birds. Hey, Neil, you found it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was a while ago. <laughs> Any book that you recommend to study the forms, whether in drawing or sculpture? Um, I like uh, Anatomy for Sculptors. It's, uh, for me, that's a really, really good book. Um, I also recommend Proco.com. It's not a book. It's a... It's a website on how to figure out anatomy or figure drawing, but it also translates into sculpting. So those are my two favorite way, you know, places to go for that kind of information. So, okay. Let's, uh, let's get this shirt in here first. Let's take a look. Yeah, so he's all sculptors pro out which is good. Let's make it, just kind of want to finish this making triangles because I'm going to use this as a base. Okay. So now if I duplicate, I'm going to delete this one. So this is, this is the block out. If you guys want to see where he started. This is the, the generic block out which I'm done with, so I'm gonna delete it and duplicate this. Oops, not the hair. What in the world? I think I just deleted. <laughs> what? What just happened? I duplicated the hair and, and it deleted the head. Good thing I just saved it. Let's load, let's load it back in here. Holy cow. That was weird. Okay. Okay, delete this. I must have hit. No. I don't know what I did there. Did I hit delete instead of duplicate? Probably. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. This is my first day. What do you think about ZBrush Auto Retopo? Is it good enough for games? I get this question every single time, Rich, and I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, but no, it's not. It's good for a sculpted base, and that's about it. Um, if you, I mean, you could get away with it if you are the one who's going to be rigging it, but if you, if you use it and send it off to a rigging department, they're going to come after you with a pitchfork. You know, it's just not, it's not there yet. You. You need to retopologize your uh, character with with deformation in mind, and the Z remesher will not give you that. So I wish, I wish, but unfortunately not quite there yet. Okay, let's do this again. Okay. And I'm just gonna mask off this, what's gonna be the shirt. It's a good question though. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you ask it because people want to know, but that is, that is a question I get all the time. <laughs> Oof. Let's see. Okay. 
And you'll notice that I use different methods to create clothing. Sometimes I'll do the topology brush. Sometimes I'll do the mask extract method. There's not one correct method, not one that rules them all. Um, but I like this one. I like this easy remesh, uh, mask it. So see how it says run masking in Z remesh. Now this is a plugin, um, that you can find on, um, what is it? Maybe Neil, if you wouldn't mind linking to it, it's uh, a plugin you can find on ArtStation and it's, it's got some really cool functionality. And one of the functions I like is this one. So I can hit, um, Alt click to run masking and remesh with extraction. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold down this. It's going to do its business and it will do that. And that's not quite what I want. Can't you just edit the Z remesh and mesh for animation? I mean, you can, but I, I've tried it before and it's, it's like untying a knot in a, in a shoe, like a crazy knot that you're just trying to get out. And it would be easier just to like cut it and relace the shoe with a new lace. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's just uh, too difficult, I guess, sometimes. Okay, that's a little, a little thick. Let's see. Hey, IR Sculptor, how's it going? Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, Z remesh, or yeah, Z remesh this by half. So we have a little half it right here. And I can just keep using that and just keep going lower and lower. How low can he go? Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And I only want the purple because, see how this is too thick? I don't want it that thick. I just want it, I don't want that. So I'm gonna basically isolate this piece, the interior piece, delete hidden, and then extrude it. But I'm going to extrude it from, instead of inward, I'm gonna extrude it outward. Okay, so let's see, go extrude. Poly group all and go like this. Now my normals are flipped. Okay, if you ever get a mesh that looks like this, it's like, oh, what did I do? Well, the normals are flipped. So all you have to do is go over to display properties and click on flip. And it just flips those normals just like so, and we're good to go. Um, but before I do that, I like to, um, I'm going to rewind because I just want to show you how to redo the thickness. But what I want to do is with this, before I add thickness, I'm going to flip this. Okay. And we have this. And now we can use the new dynamic subdivisions with thickness. And I much prefer that. It's awesome. Okay. So what we can do is turn on dynamic subdivisions right here boom and you'll see it's there's a thickness slider i can just roll that up and it will give us thickness and this is just a preview of the thickness which is awesome um so what that means is we can turn it off by hitting shift d and go back to our uh just our flat shirt and edit that so see how this is like curving inwards. I don't want it to curve down in, in like this. So, whoops. So I'm just going to come in here and inflate this bit. Whoops, not Sculptors Pro. Come on. Sometimes I forget I have Sculptors Pro on. Yeah, Jimmy, that's that's probably my newest, most favoritest thing <laughs> in ZBrush 2021 is the dynamic thickness. I've let Pixelogic know. They've, they're probably tired of uh, hearing me say that. Can you freeze that thickness? Um, you well, it's it's there right now. Um, 
like it's like I can just hit D and it's back, right? It's a it's just a temporary vi visual of it. Um, and I can make the edges soft instead of see how they're crispy right now. See how they're really crispy. Let's turn off. Uh, let's uncrease all, and it will make these edges kind of turn like this. And then what you have to do is turn this post subdiv off. And it will make the edges nice and round like cloth is rather than like something hard surface. Um, so basically turning off that uh, post subdiv is just basically saying, okay, add the thickness after you've subdivided it. Okay, that, that way you'll get the round edges. Okay. but it's just easier. See how it's much easier if I can turn all that noise off. Yeah, very non-destructive. I can turn all that noise off and just edit my single-sided surface, which is how I worked in the past. But if I wanted to pre-visit, like view what it's gonna look like, I always had to go and do what I did before and just extract all of it for real and then delete it when I was done with it to go back to the single-sided surface. So it was a destructive workflow. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. Yep, yep, same. Same, same. Old method until now. And what I like to do is just kind of get this out from being embedded. And how you can do that really easily is just hover over the center uh, square inside the gizmo. And hold down, you can see it says down here, um, hold control to inflate. And you can just inflate. That's just basically moving all of your faces on their normals. And then you can just uh, finish up the rest by hand. And smooth that down and pull it out. And there you go. So now we have a nice clean shirt underneath there. It doesn't have arms right now, but there you go. Okay. Now I want to show you guys a trick that's re really cool. I don't, here's another one, Jimmy. I don't know if you know this or not, but it's, it's really fun. So, um, say you can see his body underneath here. Say you were going to print this guy out like a Beethoven bust to sit on top of your, uh, piano or something like that. Right. Um, and he was going to be a bust. You can see how it's like round underneath here, right? Like some kind of gel sticking out or something. And I want to, I want to make it kind of clean and like a clean diagonal cut through there. Okay. So the first things first, I want to make this, this line straight on the bottom of this shirt. Okay. So what I can do is I can grab this mask lasso, mask it off, invert that mask. And then I'm going to get my clip curve brush. And you know, the clip curve brush, the way it works is it takes everything on one side of the line, takes it all and slams it down to that line, no matter what. Okay. That's it. well, not no matter what, um, it, it respects masking. So it will use masks to um, not grab the rest of the shirt. I only wanna grab this single line and pull it straight. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna hold down Control plus Shift and drag a line like this and let go of Shift so I can move it. And then I can hold Space Bar and then kind of hover it somewhere down here and then let go. And what it does is it's gonna pull that whole line and slam it down against that dotted line. Okay, so we have that and I want to kind of uh, want to grow this a little bit in this direction just so it's straighter okay so now um, now that I have that portion that's going to give me kind of a line to line up the, the skin underneath to okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the skin Portion. And I'm going to do the same thing and mask off the part that I want to pull down. Maybe not that much. Let's solo it for a second. I'm just going to kind of guess. What I usually do is I, I try and look at the apex of the curve. So like right here. And then the apex of this curve is clear up here. That's not what I want. So I'm going to guess something down here. Maybe, maybe like that. Okay, and then we can blur this. And blur it again. Go in the opposite way. And unhide everything and then grab that same clip 
Okay, and then I'm gonna put it right here. Well, first of all, I wanna cut it this way. Okay, and it's gonna pull everything up to that line. Okay, so there it clipped it off so you can see it's flat. But now I have this problem of this, this kind of valley right here, right? So how do I fix that? Well, I do the opposite direction. So now I can pull everything down. It's only gonna pull the unmasked portion to the line. So it's, uh, it's not perfect, but it's a, it's a better job. And then what I can do after that is just, um, I can nudge the rest and then do it again. So I can take my move brush and just kind of nudge it out all around here. So it goes right up to the, the shirt edge. And then I can, I can clip it again if I need to, or let's turn on double sided. No, I wish I could see the shirt. So what I can do is turn on the, the thickness on that shirt. Now I can see it and go back to, back to this piece and just kind of nudge it up in there with a smaller brush, nudge, nudge, nudge right up to the edge. And so when it prints, it's going to have a nicer edge there. So this one, I took it too far. I need to come back in. Let's smooth it out. There we go. So now I can clip it again. I've kind of messed it up and clip it again this way. Got to be careful, you got to mask it off or it won't work. It's going to bring the whole thing down with it. Whoops, gosh dang it. Got to invert that mask. There we go. Okay, and I'll just smooth this down. There you go. It's nice and clean and filled and booyah. Now he has a hair colored shirt. Let's see, uh, let's give him a, let's do, let's do kind of a black, uh, black turtleneck, maybe a darkish gray. I want a gray, kind of a coat, maybe a white shirt. So let's take it to like a light grayish. Yeah, maybe something like that. Are you guys still with me? It got all quiet all of a sudden. Oh. There we go. So let's do let's do the turtleneck. I hope I'm still straight. There we go. Just watching you clip it. All right. <laughs> Ever just memorized and just in silence, just like what? <laughs> okay, it's like totally silent. Am I streaming to myself now? Okay. Now. <laughs> no worries me. Okay. Awesome. Let's do, uh, let's get this turtleneck in there. Turtle, turtle. All right. Hey, Jill. Okay. So this way, I'm just going to show you how I usually do, uh, you know, get it to be, well, am I going to? And chat, chat takes notes and gets silent. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a thing? Okay, let's see. Um, do the same extract method, I think. Similar. <laughs> no worries. As long as I'm not as, as long as I'm not streaming by myself. All by myself. Okay.
<laughs> That's what they all say, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay. Shall W this. Hey, Stephanie, how you doing? Hey, game artist. Okay, that's and that's looking like a dicky. You guys know what a dicky is? I'm not. I'm not saying a swear. It's a real thing. It's like a. It's like a sweater, like a turtleneck. It just goes down into your shirt. But <laughs> yeah, it's not not really a a shirt. It's like a fake shirt. <laughs> okay, so see this this pink thing. I'm going to uh, pink area. I'm gonna do the. Yeah, zero measure. Oh, excuse me. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put this everything else in its own group. I don't want to <laughs> Christmas vacation. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, so I'm going to um, just put this into two poly groups because basically I want to clean up this edge how you can do that is go to polish by features like this and that will clean that edge right up see that um this is still a little bit lumpy so we can do it some more polish by features um if you still have it going it's me road dude todd what's going on man holy cow how are things So, do I, I? I haven't told you, Todd, but I've I've moved back kind of close to you again. I'm in Saratoga, so just up the hill from you. So I used to work with Road at uh, Disney Interactive. He's still there, and it's Warner Brothers now. And they just barely released information on um, the the game they've been working on. They can finally talk about it. They've been making Harry Potter, that new the new Harry Potter game that you guys might may or may not have heard of. So it looks fantastic. Yeah, dude, we should hang out after the after the Rona is over. <laughs> okay, so this is all clean again. Hogwarts Legacy. Yep, that's what it's called. Thanks. Okay. A yeah, game, game artist. He's a um, he's a world builder. Build the world. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just wait. I'm just hoping, Doug, that that comes sooner than later. That's all. <laughs> okay. Let's do. Uh, let's see. Remesh this puppy. Um. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of this head. Do I sculpt and sculpt as pro? Yes, that's what this is here. Oops, not that. That's not what I want. Let's go lasso. We hidden. There we go. Just because when I Z remesh, I don't want to have it calculate his whole head. Just the, just the neck. This is all I want. Okay, so let's do, I could also do the same thing with the bottom if I wanted to, just hack that off and delete hidden. But I do, okay, you might be wondering like why I'm not just doing this and just Z-remeshing that, which I could, but sometimes I find the Z-remesher does a better job if I leave it um, with, if I leave its neighboring geometry and then go to keep groups, Z-remesh, See what we get. Oh, yep. So sometimes it just won't give you what you want. Like this right here. What the heck is that? Let's go a little higher. See if it does a better job. That's not bad. So now we can take this and just do a half. Let's do that. Whoops. Do that over here. Let's 
and simplify it a bit. Maybe more. Okay, let's delete these now. See if it gives us better. There we go. That's what I want. All right. Um, got a little question. How can I turn off the dotted line when I'm drawing any hair? You just have to tap on the surface when you're done. That's the curve, right? When you're drawing the hair, that's the curve. Um, so for example, if I draw some hair like this, you see, you can kind of see the curve inside there. You just tap on the surface and it goes away. So that's it. How much time it takes to be really good with primitive blockings? Good, the good I mean to give it shape, which is good for further refinement of detailing. That's a that's a hard question to answer. It's it's about how fast of a learner you are, how much skill you have, and um, you know just kind of um, how fast you pick things up and uh, how how well you can interpret concepts. It's it goes quicker if you're already a um, if you're already a, a good artist. It's easier. And if you're so because there's two sides to the coin, right? You're trying to learn art and you're trying to learn the tech. So if you already have art skills and you're just learning the technology, you're going to learn much faster. But if you're learning both art and technology at the same time, it's going to be slower. And art art is a life lifetime process, whereas technology, it's kind of like it comes and goes, right? You're learning something new technologically all the time. Um, but art, art is forever. Do a double sided thing. No name, yes. No, no problem at all. Okay, kind of clean that out, and then I can turn on dynamic on this and add a thickness. All right. I want this pretty thick and let's turn this off there we go see i love this jimmy look at this let's go go thicker uh too thick too thick <laughs> back it off okay see it's what i love about this non-destructive thing is um now that I can see the thickness and just be editing as a single-sided mesh, I can now edit how, how kind of, uh, see how it's the shirt is interpenetrating the, the, the collar turtleneck thing underneath. So I can, I, I, it gives me a clue as far as like how, you know, where it lives. So I really, really like it. <laughs> Can you rig Z remesh models in Maya? Uh, Nick, I, I, you can, but I don't recommend it because the the mesh is not optimized for deformation, so I would not recommend it. So the the short answer is yes. The long answer is no. Definitely not. Is it possible? Yeah. Will the rigging department hate you? Yes. <laughs> All right. Looks like I lost my color. I'm going to fill this. Jumping on a topology project. Awesome. Jimmy, what do you use to do your topology? Just out of curiosity. Okay. I want to go pretty dark with his turtleneck. It's 
something like this. You know, uh, topology, a lot of people hate it, but I kind of find it um, therapeutic in a way, you know, and it's very, it's very puzzle-ish, like you're trying to puzzle it. So it takes a lot of concentration and figuring out how the topology is going to flow and how it's going to work. And it's, uh, I like it. A lot of people don't, but I, I'm a fan. Cool. I want to see the top of guns new features when it comes out that those new swatches they have yeah and i've used that i've used it for um when i did when i did the uh the overwatch character zenyatta skin i i used uh quad draw and i liked it i had a really good experience with that Okay, let's stick his collar on. Let's make, make his collar. Okay, now with the collar, I'm going to do that with the draw topology method. So I'll have to learn Maya if I have to make riggable models. Um, you, n yes and no. You can do some retopology inside of here. Um, but if you want to like uh, have it be fast when you're trying to be fast and optimal um you'll need to learn most likely you'll need to learn another program that is specialized in retopology there are several so um everybody has their favorites and you don't there's not one particular one that will do you know it's just a matter of what you know what you're comfortable with so and since this is a pixel logic channel um, I'm not going to get into what other software I use in conjunction with ZBrush, but um, yeah, good stuff. I will I will usually take my models out of ZBrush to retopologize them. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay. And there's, I will say too, that there is no, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no like one definitive thing you need to know. Yeah, like Zaris uses Cinema 4D. People use Maya. People use Blender. There's so many different ones. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just whatever you have access to and then whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so let's draw. This may be tricky because I'm drawing it on the super low resolution surface so to have a better experience with drawing this topology what i'm going to do is duplicate this and i think jimmy you were asking me this um I, I want to apply this dynamic and as soon as you apply it basically what it does is it adds the thickness in there and then it adds the three levels of uh subdivision so now it's a subdivided mesh with thickness and um, now what I can do is get rid of the lower subdivision levels, delete lower. And now my, this is the resolution of my object without dynamic turned on. So now I have this to draw on rather than a super low resolution dynamically subdivided mesh. So. Oh, thanks, Darko. Okay. Uh, let's see. So it just gives me some better resolution when it comes to drawing my topology here. And I'm just trying to get my shapes in place. Actually, I think I want to redraw that line down a little further. Yeah, that's better. And then I criss it here. 
crisscross. Um, I made most of these, yes. Okay, and then one half. Okay, now for this piece, I'm going to draw like this because I want this pole here. Um, because I don't want this corner to go all the way to the edge, I want some space. You're one of the people that helped me make my jump into ZBrush. Thank you. You're welcome, Ori. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. Where do you get them printed? Uh, right there. I, I have a printer here, but most of these have been printed by um, Form Labs. So. I, I've gone to the Zebra Summit several years in a row and Form Labs does uh, a booth there and they like to show off some models. So they um, approached me to see if I had any models that they could print to show off the printing. And that's what one, two, three of those are from. The Boba Fett up here is from um, Disney Interactive when I used to work there on Disney Infinity. That's just a bigger version of Boba Fett. And then um, Kate up top right here was printed on a Pegasus. So that wasn't a form two, and that was also for a the Zebra Summit. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Ooh. Pull that out really far. Um, what are your thoughts on the new retopology tools? Would you use ZBrush built-in ones in 2021 instead of 3 Co? for example? Not, um, so I, no, I would use that for, uh, specific things. Like if I'm making a belt, I would use that. If I'm making, uh, uh, straps, I, I'd like to use that. Um, any, anytime I'm, um, needing to do retopology and I don't want to take it out of ZBrush, uh, then I'll use the extrude edge, the new extrude edge. I like it a lot, but I would not um, retopologize an entire character in that. And the only reason why, there's only one reason why, and that is that you cannot, uh, you can't relax your, like right here, for example, if I wanted to smooth this out and make it more, when you when you smooth and relax your points, it will become more, uh, square your your faces will become more square and I use that when I'm doing retopology all the time over and over and over again and I can't do that with with the the mesh continuing to snap to the surface so that's the the, ca the caveat is it needs to snap and be able to be relaxed across the surface without uh, you know sucking into the surface so okay so now that I have this, I can commit it and I'll just, if you turn your draw size down to one and tap on the surface, come on, you can do it little, sometimes it doesn't work. There we go. Okay. Neil, I don't, I don't. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to split the mass points. Now we have geometry for a color. What is retopology and why is it necessary? Retopology is essentially rebuilding the surface of your model. Um, and the reason you want to do it is for uh, geometry optimization for deformation. There's a mouthful for you. Um, so when you're trying to animate your character, uh, game, game, engines cannot handle millions and millions of polygons so you'll need to reduce the amount of polygons that they that your model is made up of in a very specific way preparing for deformation so like your joints will have a specific loop layout so when uh, the character bends its joints it will look good in animation that's essentially what it is
Okay. So for this one, this will be interesting. I'm gonna uncrease all. There we go, it doesn't look too bad. And where did my shirt go? Yeah, no worries, Hank. And and it is it is a quite a bit of a process to do retopology. That's why a lot of people ask during my stream if they can use the Z Remesh mesh to do it, to to automate it. And unfortunately it's just not to the point of being able to be automated yet. I'm gonna scale this out on, on the normals here. I wish, maybe someday, but currently you cannot. Pulling the, these points out away. And this is honestly why I like to build some of my clothing with very, very, very low geometry. I mean, can you imagine if this was a a masked and extracted um, set of, you know, if 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 it was ma if it was masked and extracted, this would be a, a lot denser. And instead of pulling like what is, what do we have across here, like six points to pull out, I would have I don't know how many, and it would just be uh, introduce a lot of undulations in my surface so that's why i keep it super low and that's why i draw a lot of people are like why don't you just mask extract everything well that's why because i want to keep things clean and easier to edit, edit. exactly who wants to be moving points forever not i <laughs> Yeah, my 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 friend Danny Williams. He goes. He uh, his nickname is Point Pusher. And that's exactly why is because you know before there was sculpting, there was pushing points. And this is exactly what you would do: is you just be nudging points, push, push, push. go we have his collar and I want to make this kind of a lighter gray and then I'll use this shirt to kind of rebuild and make a coat underneath and I think we'll be good I love pushing points too but not like a ton you know it's like it's like herding sheep you'll have either like a whole flock that you can't handle or you'll have a, enough that you can handle <laughs> you know uh, pushing points since 90. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Isn't that the truth? Save this thing. Will the workshop do more on turning sculpts into illustration art rather than game in the future? Uh, yes, Kevin. I'm, I'm planning on taking... I, I, I want to talk about what my plans are, but I can't. But yes, I can answer that question saying yes. I'm, I'm wanting to do more examples of different directions you can take your characters. For sure. Okay. So for this, I'm going to try something. Okay. Hide the shirt. Oh, this is the subdivided one. I want this one. I'm done with this, so I can delete it. Delete it. And duplicate this one. Okay. So what I'm going to try is this trim cut. Now this is, trim cut's kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know if it's going to work or not. Um... I'm not sure that I need to though. I'm just looking at this polyflow and seeing if I can use it with the collar. Because I just basically I'm I'm making the rest of the coat, but I need it to be open right here. 
And I think if I just delete a handful of these rows, I can just use this. Let's try it. Now I've gotten myself into trouble, Kev, by, by saying too much of my plans and then them not coming to fruition and then me going, oh crap, that didn't happen. I said it would happen and it didn't happen. And then it's me, I'm left with apologies instead of surprises. <laughs> so I've learned my lesson there to keep my mouth shut. It's late here, I need to get some sleep. All right, man, well, thanks for hanging out. Yep, go check out Jimmy's work if you guys haven't. He's a fabulous sculptor to study. His work, not him. <laughs> Take care, man. Yep, I'm, I'll be wrapping up here in about 15. All right. Yeah, so that'll work. That'll work for the coat. Let's give him some shoulders though, shall we? Shoulders, maybe not that. Thanks, Neil. Blending, blurring this. Okay. I'm not leaving just yet. Hasham. <laughs> Indeed he is. Okay, let's do a dark gray for this coat. And to maybe in here somewhere. When you make a model for animating, should the mouth always be made wide open like this model you're on? Would you have to redo the mouth for lip sync? Yes, I would. I usually leave. I usually leave the mouth open slightly. Oh, I'm hiding Josh's name here. Here, there you go, Josh Hunter. Um, I usually leave the mouth open slightly just so when I do uh, baking and rig, when I'm doing rigging or when somebody else is doing rigging, so um, the envelopes don't overlap when I'm doing weight painting. It's nice to just have the mouth straight, just a neutral pose, slightly open. So. This one, he is in a, a in a pose. He's got his little frown. And if I wanted to animate him, I would make his mouth straight and open it slightly. Not wide, just slightly. Okay. You're welcome, Andrew. Thanks for the shout out. I appreciate it. There we go. That looks like it's made of the same material. Now these points aren't very sharp, right? So how do we get them sharper? There's a little trick that uh, comes from my, my old polygon knowledge. And uh, basically, you put two loops close together, and it makes a sharper point when it's subdivided. 
So basically what you can do is you can use the model, the uh, Z modeler brush. And by default, it's just set to insert edge when you hover over an edge. So basically I can take an edge here, insert it and slide it right up next to this corner here. So now when I hit subdivide, you can see it. You can see it made a sharper edge. Now I can do that with this one as well. Be much sharper. It's got some weirdness going on in here. So let's see if we can fix that. I want to add, it's kind of tricky because when you add two loops together like so, it's going to, it's going to make a peak. It's going to pinch the geometry there. So now when I subdivide, you can see, so it didn't fix what I wanted it to fix and then it added that. So that's not what I want. So I'm gonna undo that. And then I'm gonna try and do it this side. Maybe like this and like this. That fixed it. See that? Whoop. Butamus. And then we can do out here and out here. And that will clean that up and make a very nice edge. And then on this inside, this is kind of messy. So I'm going to overlap. Bring this in and down. So you can't see that geometry in there. What makes you pick between the insert edge versus crease option? Um, crease isn't very easily controlled. You have to control crease with the crease settings and there's nothing to indicate what level the crease line is at other than visually in, in as far as like how much it's creased. But if you have edge loops in there, you can, um, increase or decrease that level of, of, of sharpness based on how close that edge is to the other edge. Um, yeah, just do a test on a cube sometime. Just subdivide a cube and then insert an edge and slide it right close to the edge and see what happens to it. And the closer you slide it, the sharper that crease. Yeah, neutral makes sense since the dummies will control the expression of the character. The dummies? <laughs> Are animators called dummies now? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm a student in visual effects school and I'm creating a character for animation. I've been watching your stream and I was curious to know if it really matters if I use Marvelous Designer for cloth or sculpting. Out the cloth and ZBrush is just as good. I need to animate my character but cloth does not need to simulate. Then it depends on the look you're going for, the level of realism. If you're going extremely realistic, then Marvelous is obviously the way to go. But if you're doing stylized or semi-stylized, I would absolutely do it in ZBrush, whether using the new cloth simulation stuff or sculpting it in by hand. I prefer sculpting cloth, but the cloth simulator in here will give you some ideas, some new ideas that maybe you hadn't thought of. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I would do. Dummies used on the model's face in maximum. Oh, you're talking about yeah, the dummy objects. Yeah, or or bones. You can't use dummy objects when you're rigging for games, but you can for t television and uh, films. I knew what you meant. I was just joking with you, by the way. Yes, I've, I've rigged many a, a character. And it's funny because they're, those objects are different, called different things in different uh, programs. This guy makes me laugh. Just so like tired. So tired. Can I just, can I just sleep please? When is this guy gonna be done? <laughs> that's, that's what he's telling me. He's being patient. I'm just 
just a beginner in modeling, so pardon me, but is sculpting for statues and animation totally different process? I'm trying to have a clean topology and focus on the sculpting part for now. Um, it's So making the high resolution character, the method is exactly the same for anything you want to do, typically. Um, where it changes is when you get done with your high resolution sculpt, from there, depending on which direction you take it, that's when things change. That's when things change to, well, I need to pose this and make it watertight for 3D printing, or I need to retopologize this and bake the maps for game characters, or I need to subdivide this and make uh, uh, UDIMs and um, displacement maps for film or television. So it, it completely depends after that. It, it branches at, at the top after your high resolution sculpt is done. So video games have to manipulate facial expressions differently. Are they still used in cutscenes with high-res models? So they are different. They they use um, typically they will use morph targets, whereas inside of a game engine, game engines typically do not support morph targets because it's too expensive on the engine. Morph targets are um, all the information is stored in the points rather than in the bone, and the bone is driving the points. I'm I'm getting way too technical here. So. <laughs> um, uh, so yes, they're still used in cinematics, the, the morph targets, along with uh, corrective shapes. So that means like if, you're, if your character is going like, to like do one of these things and you want to corrective shape in here that the bone is destroying and the, it's, it, it will, there will be a morph target that will do corrective shapes. And that usually doesn't happen inside the game engines. It's becoming more and more normal in game engines as the processors become more powerful, but typically that it doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> yep, totally. Ask Jeeves. Go ahead. Ask me a question. I can I can uh, picture him having the voice of Napoleon Dynamite too. <laughs> yeah, morph targets and blend shapes are the same thing. Indeed. Okay. So one thing I just noticed, but it's about time to wrap it up. Is see how his coat is hanging over him much more, and with this guy. Uh, his chest is full or more full, so I gotta fix that. It's things you see as you as you work. And this collar is much tighter. So there we go. Uh, no, you cannot use UDIMs inside of ZBrush. It uses one, one UV set only. And one UV set per subtool as well. Does, top, does pose matter for topology or sculpted face expressions? For example, a soft expression could be easily to retopo than some weird face. Uh, they're, they're typically the same. I mean, it, yes, it does depend on what the character needs to do, but for the most part, it's the same. The same topology will perform both functions because you want a dynamic face, one that will be able to, usually they test it by puffing out the cheeks and you know, like, one of those things and then they you you can do the extremes with them but typically you want you you want to uh build it so it can do everything but yeah sometimes there are there are specific cases where you're like i need this character to like unhinge his jaw so you have to build it that way Okay, I think I am going to call this guy done for now. And I'll get him rendered off screen. Let's check him out in perspective. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Boom, there we go. 
excuse me, let's see. So if I was animating Joker, who usually smiles, his mouth should be semi-smiling rather than neutral to save work. If yeah, if with the Joker, Joker's tricky because he kind of is in a constant state of smiling, but you still need to have him make an ooh shape with with his face, right? I mean, he, he still if you're doing the Joker that has the scars and stuff, he would still have the scars making the ooh face. But if he's if he's got the big smile, and then you have have to go from that extreme down to making ooh that's going to break your model. So you would probably still want to model the Joker with a neutral face and then have his default be the smile. So I'm so done right now. <laughs> oh man. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me again. On this month on this monday hope you all have a safe week and we'll see you hopefully next monday all right and we'll start something else i may or may not start a character on the same sheet i'm having a lot of fun sculpting all these characters on the same sheet so um yeah i'm, I'm pretty happy with how this guy turned out i want to do one thing though i want to turn his pupils so he's looking to his his left instead of just being kind of like neutral like this so let me do that really quickly and while I do that, I just wanted to shout out and say, if you want this user interface and these brushes, you can get them for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And you can grab them right there. Just scroll down until you see the blue, the big blue bar and you can enter your name and email and you will get these brushes and this user interface. I also teach an online course. If you want to learn more about how to sculpt like this and make characters like this, uh, 3D Character Workshop, you can check that out as well. So um, let me just, Grab these and I'm going to do auto groups. So they're in separate groups and mask one out. Well, turn off symmetry. There we go. And I'm just going to move this over. I'm just guessing where the center of this eye is. I have no idea really. They will not work in ZBrush Core or Core Mini. Those programs do not allow you to have custom icons for your brushes and custom brushes. You can you can mess with the brushes, but there's not too much you can do with them. It's limited. There we go. I should have given him eyelashes, dang it. He needs eyelashes. All right. <laughs> Got you guys. Thanks for hanging out, Angry. Thanks, me. Take care. And we will catch you next Monday. Okay, fine. <laughs> what this guy's saying. Oh, finally. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Bye.